Hi. Hi. Before we get started today, I just wanted to say if you're in the Toronto area or in Toronto or visiting or love Twilight and want to blow your savings on a plane ticket, who am I to tell you how to live your life? On February 3rd at 9 p.m. at Hot Doc Cinema, I am hosting another Twilight watchathon. Watch along. Just want, we're watching it once. We're not watching it, it. Watch along. It's so much fun. The tickets are in my description below. It's basically a shout along. It's like Rocky Horror meets Twilight. There's shout along games. There's drinking games. Every time somebody does something Oscar worthy, we shout Oscar. Things like that. It is so much fun. There's like signature cocktails. It's just truly like a fan girl vibe. I love doing these. It's truly just like iconic. There's also friendship bracelet stations, food, snacks. Get your friends, come. It's going to be a blast. Again, that's on February 3rd at 9 p.m. Link in my description. I will see you there, bitch. <laughs> Hi, hello. If you're new here, my name is Carly. Welcome back to my channel. This isn't the first video of the new year. My, my brain, brain is, is melted. melted. It's January. It's snowing. I'm going to be honest with you, despite my best um, efforts, I have slipped heavily into winter depression, seasonal depression. All I want to do is play Stardew Valley and rot in my bed, but I, I have come to you today to talk about some niche Twilight drama because I am a hero. Really, that's, it's as simple as that. So recently I have become obsessed with niche author drama. There's like this one on TikTok where basically this debut author has been giving, like leaving one star reviews on competing debut authors under like fake accounts and shit. There's a video that uh, Cindy does. I will link it below. It is unreal. It's so interesting and funny and i've been doing research on a video that i think i'm going to do about a plagiarism scandal that happened in 2006 with this debut author iconic amazing but while i was doing research on that i started remembering that stephanie meyer who wrote twilight and just so you know i'm going to say stephanie meyers 900 times i know it is stephanie meyer singular but my brain goes seth myers late night with seth myers late night with stephanie myers myers is plural okay that's just the way it's gonna happen no disrespect to stephanie meyer she's got more money than i will ever dream of having i mean a little disrespect because she did steal massive parts of twilight from the indigenous community but we're not talking about that today because i don't think anybody wants to see me uh doing that that's just kind of like disrespectful and insane so a little disrespect to stephanie meyer but stephanie meyer in 2009 was accused of plagiarizing breaking dawn the final twilight book sorry had to itch my face i'm a human just like you and in 2009 i was still a child so beyond the headlines i didn't really take this in i was just like it's probably not true i don't really care also i wasn't a huge twilight fan growing up i had some internalized misogyny like that's my journey that's not everybody's journey with the twilight books my journey with the twilight books is being like girls like twilight but boys get to be behind the steering wheel of a tank so you know, make that decision with the information that you have. But I did some research. Also, side note, when I was researching this, I found out a different Twilight drama, which is that Ashley Green, who plays Alice in the movies, her apartment burned down and her landlord, because they didn't want to like pay the renters or like the home insurance, the building manager was like, I found a crack pipe in your house. So it burnt down because you do crack. And that was just not true. I loved reading that story. But I did research about this plagiarism claim that Stephanie Meyer, <sighs> Stephanie Meyer faced. It sounds wrong, right? Like Stephanie Myers. That sounds correct. That she faced in 2009 about Breaking Dawn. And it is so insane and funny. So I'm going to break it down for you today in a quick little loving video. Hi, I thought we'd just take a quick break from today's video and talk about this week's sponsor, HelloFresh. If you didn't know, HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit and they want to make your 2024 your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef crafted recipes delivered right to your door at a price that you'll love. I love HelloFresh. My parents are obsessed with it. I have been trying to cook more in my life these last couple of months and HelloFresh makes it super easy because I like the act of cooking but going to the grocery store is not my favorite so HelloFresh makes that super easy they also have very very tasty vegan and vegetarian options which is great for me have you heard that breakfast is the most important meal of the day so you agree that breakfast is the most important meal of the day well HelloFresh agrees in fact 
HelloFresh is giving away free breakfast for life. That means that you'll enjoy one totally free breakfast item with every single delivery of a HelloFresh package as long as your subscription lasts. That is one free breakfast item in your HelloFresh box forever. Forever! Again, I'm not mincing words here. I take breakfast very seriously, so I would never mess around when it comes to breakfast food. So go to the link in my description below and use the code P-O-G-U-N Carly free and get free breakfast for life with HelloFresh as long as your subscription lasts. Again, go to the link in the description below and use the code P-O-G-U-N Carly free and get one free breakfast item for life. I love HelloFresh. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into it. So this happens in August 2009. Obama has just been sworn into office. Grinder has just been released on the App Store. The Hannah Montana movie was in theaters earlier this year. Vibes are good. And in August 2009, the author Jordan Scott lawyers up and sends a cease and desist letter to Hachette Book Group, which is Stephanie Myers's publisher, basically claiming that massive parts, plot points, and scenes from Breaking Dawn, which was released the year before in 2008, have been stolen from her fantasy children's series about vampires called The Nocturne. Now I tried to do some research about this because every single article about this plagiarism claim focuses on the original letter sent to Hachette, Hachette's response, and the ending, how the judge rules, which we will get to. But not a lot focuses on The Nocturne, the book, or Jordan Scott the author. And I was like, I need to get some flavor, you know, what is a story without complex characters, right? Stephanie Meyer, answer that question. I'd love to know. I had to do some research into like what this book was and who Jordan Scott was. And there's not a lot of information online. Whenever I look up Jordan Scott, writer, Jordan Scott books, Jordan Scott, whatever, a Canadian poet comes up, which is decidedly not her. I'll give some free promo to Jordan Scott, Canadian poet. Great. Like there's just not a lot of information. Even on Goodreads, when you look up The Nocturne, there's only about six reviews for the book in total. And it's got a horrible review, like rating, because it's been review bombed by Twilight fans, but only six of them. Because The Nocturne, which was published in 2006, was independently published or self-published. And a portion of it was originally published online, but taken down because of the lawsuit. There's just like a weird amount of information not out there yet. I really, really wish this happened in like 2014 when everyone was chronically online, but unfortunately 2009, we were still kind of like free from the grasps of Mark Zuckerberg. You know what I mean? Like he hadn't destroyed democracy and the very fabric of our society yet. <laughs> The Nocturne was published in 2006. It was self-published. When Jordan Scott wrote this cease and desist letter and decided to try and sue Stephanie Meyer, she was 21, but she wrote The Nocturne when she was 14 years old. She graduated high school when she was 14 years old as well. So gifted kid program. Maybe she was experiencing a bit of gifted kid burnout, eldest daughter syndrome, and decided I might sue Stephanie Myers today. I'm gonna wake up and choose just a bit of violence, just a bit of violence, love. So she was 21 when she was suing Stephanie Meyer, 14 when she wrote The Nocturne. It is also just kind of like a vampire romance book. I can't find it anywhere, so I cannot read it. She wrote it originally as a short story published online on a blog of some sort, but then some writer friends encouraged her to elongate it. So she wrote it as a full length novel, publishing a handful of chapters as she was writing it online, much like a fan fiction, but a fan fiction of your own creative work. And then when when she published it, she took it down, okay? You're all catch, you're ca you've caught up. So Jordan Scott has alleged that Breaking Dawn has considerable similarities enough to create a plagiarism case to their original work, The Nocturne. Now here's the thing about copyright law <laughs> and let me explain it to you. Don't you want copyright law explained to you by a YouTuber? It just seems correct. Because my life is varied and insane, I took a couple of copyright law classes because they were like required at my university. You need a massive case. Like you need a, a an intense, intense case for plagiarism to often go through. Like it needs to be like word for word or a couple of words or metaphors switched. You can't just be like, but the book had a talking whale. And in my book, I had a talking whale. Like there needs to be 
considerable amount of proof. There's a really, really fun and interesting copyright case about Sherlock Holmes in which the Arthur Conan Doyle estate lost the rights to most of the Sherlock Holmes stories because after a certain amount of years, 100 years or 200 years, they just become public domain. But they had like three stories that were written that they still had control of because they hadn't passed that 200, 100 year old threshold. And in those stories, because they're later works, Sherlock Holmes is not as callous, he's a lot nicer and he has feelings where in the original stories, he's basically like, Spock coded. He's just like a genius with no feelings. So they tried to sue Enola Holmes starring Millie Bobby Brown because in Enola Holmes, the Sherlock character is nice to his sister. And they go, the Sherlock in the public domain would never be nice to his sister. Um, they lost, they lost. But copyright law is very weird and we do not have like enough <laughs> parameters around it to make a case considerably. So here are these similarities that Jordan Scott claimed that Breaking Dawn had with the Nocturne. And this is what they, they, they did a, a copyright case on this. Both books include an after wedding sex scene on the beach, a scene about a woman who is sick because she's pregnant with a child that has evil powers, a scene in which the pregnant wife is dying, a scene in which the main character sees their baby for the first time, the main character turns into a vampire, and the main character refers to his wife as love. They claim that these are not common conventions in the vampire literature canon, which might be true. But on the other hand, and again, I'm not a lawyer. I love the drama of a copyright case. It's not like I want to side with Stephanie Meyer, who surely has Hachette's entire legal team behind her. But like, you can't lay claim to a dying pregnant wife. You don't own dying pregnant wife, the trope forever. If we're laying claim to scenes like that, no book's ever going to be written because J.R.R. Tolkien's going to go, no, well, I actually, I actually got the copyright claims to the hero's journey. The hero's journey is actually mine. And if anybody does the hero's journey, I'm taking your ass to prison. Okay. So Hachette released a statement regarding this. Um, they didn't really care. First, they said neither Stephanie Meyer nor her representatives had any knowledge of this writer or her supposed book prior to this claim. They also said, Miss Scott's attorney has yet to furnish us with a copy of the book to support this claim as requested. The world of the Twilight Saga and the stories within it are entirely the creation of Miss Meyer. Her books have been a phenomenal sensation and perhaps it shouldn't be surprising to hear that other people may seek to ride on the coattails of such success. Forgot to breathe there for a second. This claim is frivolous and any lawsuit will be defended vigorously. I'm um, basically stating that this is a publicity stunt of some sort. I am always reticent to support the claim that anything is a publicity stunt. I think things are much less for pu publicity than we often think they are. But <laughs> you know, this claim that this copyright plagiarism lawsuit was a publicity stunt basically to foist the career of Jordan Scott has, has a, has a a little bit of of substance to it because the lawyer literally said in a interview with MTV, iconic. I love that MTV is the New York Times of the Twilight plagiarism case. The lawyer said, I think fans have to read both books and make up their own mind, just like a judge will have to. So when your lawyer is kind of like trying to shill your book, it does make it seem like this is a publicity stunt. Um, also because the book was self-published, but only in a small run, like this book is nowhere. Like you can't find it anywhere. It was sold out online when all of these articles were being written in 2009. You can't buy it now. They weren't giving the publisher this book to see if the copyright claims are legitimate. So it just kind of seems like they're doing their own thing. <laughs> so again, I tried to research a bit about Jordan Scott online. I wanted to find this book quite honestly and see if I could actually find the passages. Because if you have word for word passages that are basically copied or very, very similar to passages in your book, then you do have a claim, right? No, it's just the concept of the husband calling his wife love. You better not try and write a book where the wife dies, okay? Because if you do, Jordan Scott's coming for your f***ing ass. Jordan Scott owns dead pregnant wife. Okay, that's their medium. I couldn't find a lot about them online and I am an internet sleuth. I am sexy, sexy Sherlock Holmes and I couldn't find literally anything. They don't seem to have any like social media accounts. If they do, maybe they've changed their name. I think I found their IMDB, but I'm not gonna put it up because I'm not about to dox a random actress. I couldn't find anything about this book or this author outside of these articles, which is, it's strange, okay? I did find two things that I need to talk to you about before I talk to you about 
the ruling in the case of whether of, of Stephanie Meyer v. The Nocturne. The two things I found were Jordan Scott's Goodread page, okay? And an interview that Jordan Scott gave to MTV, which is my favorite piece of literature. I'm gonna campaign Pulitzer Prize for MTV and their interview with Jordan Scott, who accused Stephanie Meyer of plagiarism. Pulitzer for them, because this is my favorite piece of journalism. It is the most unhinged article known to man. The things that Jordan Scott admits to MTV for free are amazing. And here's the thing, like I am well aware that I say I sound in this video like a Stephanie Meyer fangirl. Like it sounds like I am going to bat for her. I have no stake in the game. Do I host Twilight watch alongs? Absolutely. I have not read the Twilight books. I think I read the first one forever ago. I love the fan culture of Twilight. I think the movies are camp and hilarious and very fun. I don't care if Stephanie Meyer plagiarized this. Like I, that that could very well happen. It happens a lot of times. It sounds like I'm, I'm dying for her and going to bat for her. That's not it. It just so happens that the person who accused her of plagiarism is one of the most unhinged individuals who have ever walked this planet. So first on their Goodreads, I was like, maybe they've written other Books, and I can see that maybe they're a successful author now and they've just moved past this. I would love that. I also hold near and dear to my heart that when you are 21, your brain not fully cooked. I was on YouTube as at 21 and my first videos when I watched them back, I'm like, why am I saying that online? Like you are just at your peak unhinged behavior at 21. So I would love a Jordan Scott redemption arc. Not that. What I did find on their Goodreads is that they have attributed themselves as the author of both the movie A Simple Favor, starring Blake Lively and Anna Kendrick, and The Perks of Being a Wallflower, starring The Flash slash criminal themselves, Ezra Miller, and I want to say Logan Lerman, but I'm not. I get Logan Lerman in a lot of the other act. Like, he looks kind of like Dylan O'Brien. Emma Watson, for sure in Perks of Being a Wildflower doing a questionable American accent. Love Emma Watson. When I saw A Simple Favor, I was like, oh, amazing. Sometimes a phoenix can rise from the publicity stunt ashes and go on to write the screenplay for A Simple Favor. That's great, I watched A Simple Favor. It was fun, it was a fun time. Blake Lively's in a suit. It's doing things to me that I need to be done. But then I looked it up and that's just not true. <laughs> like it's just written by a fully different woman with notes from a different screenwriter who's also not Jordan Scott and notes from Paul Feig, Feig, the comedy director. It's just not written by her. Also, The Perks of Being a Wallflower the screenplay is written by Steven Chbosky, who wrote the book. So why do you, have you attributed yourself as the author of the screenplay for The Perks of Being a Wallflower? And a simple favor, what's going on there? I, the world may never know. Then I found this interview she gave to MTV. I would pay literally a million dollars to be in this room. If somebody said, you get to go back in time to do one thing, and I go, oh, I've got it. And they go, oh, surely you're gonna stop the Kennedy assassination. I'd go, no, 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 baby girl. I don't have time to stop the Kennedy assassination. I need to go back to August of 2009 when Jordan Scott gave an interview to MTV and gave the most unhinged quotes in, journalism ever. So first, Jordan Scott kind of opens this interview when the interviewer says, what's one question that you would give to Stephanie Meyer? And Jordan Scott goes, why? Why would you do this? Flair for the dramatics, obsessed with it. Then they give this quote, I don't think it's a coincidence. This isn't about vampires or vampire lore. It's about the events in the book from the main characters getting married and the description of the ceremonies. If you've seen the Twilight wedding, it's every Pinterest wedding. The feelings the characters are going through, the scene on the beach, the pregnancy and the discussion of it being a boy and giving him a weird name and the husband having to cut the baby out of the wife and the wife cutting up blood. <laughs> These books are insane. The Twilight books are insane. These are not things you typically see in the vampire genre. Then Jordan responds to the claim that this is a publicity stunt to foist their career by saying, I'm a student. I do play guitar and I like music, but it's not a career. Now I'm imagining Jordan as like every single person playing Wonderwall on the guitar at a party. I play guitar. I'm not planning an album and I have modeled because I could, but I'm not out to be a model. <laughs> Hold me to this standard that if I ever get in deep shit, if I get canceled, if I say something that's uncouth and I am held accountable, if I launch a plagiarism lawsuit against the perks of being a wallflower, hold me to the standard that I will say that I 
am a model in my apology or in my clarifying interview. I'm a model and I modeled because I could. I'm a model and I modeled because I'm pretty and I could, but I don't even want to be a model, but I am a model, okay? What career would I be trying to advance? I didn't go to the media. I first heard about the lawsuit a couple weeks ago when I got a question based on the cease and desist letter sent by my lawyer. That doesn't make any sense. Like you can't say I first heard about the lawsuit when the lawyer that I hired sent a cease and desist letter on my behalf and people asked me questions about the cease and desist letter. That's the first time I heard about this. Now I want you to remember that this is a book that nobody can buy anywhere. When asked if it's possible that Meyer could have seen or read The Nocturne when she was working on Twilight, Scott said, I think it's a great possibility. Love and honestly keep that energy and keep that confidence. I want that level of confidence. Who is watching my YouTube channel right now? Well, first Steven Spielberg, obviously, because he's a fan of film and this is quite literally film. Um, the ghost of Charlie Chaplin, for sure. Any of the Academy Awards panel of, of voters, for sure. I'm getting the first Academy Award for blonde haired YouTuber and it's gonna happen. Then she said, it looks like she used the Nocturne as a model. I don't know if she read a chapter and wrote a chapter, but the similarities are there. I I hope that I could get recognition for my work and an admission from her. I'm not out for money. Next year I'm done with school and I want to go into screenwriting. We know you want to go into screenwriting, girl. You claimed you wrote a simple favor. Also, if you're going to lie, why would you not say you wrote like Shawshank? That'd be me. Let's actually, let's get that spreading. I wrote Shawshank Redemption. I love prison. There's one more comment that Scott issues to the media. This was in an article by The Guardian, so I don't know where they sourced it from, but it's my favorite comment Ever. I wrote The Nocturne with the intent of bringing readers into a completely new world of the fantasy and romance genre. I have an award-winning script and three other scripts in various stages. I hope you're not talking about a simple favor and perks of being a wallflower. Wow. I love school, writing, music, and of course, boys. That can't, that simply <laughs> can't be how that sentence ends. Reading that made it felt, it felt like my brainstem had snapped off. I had a tear in my brainstem and I was hemorrhaging blood because that can't, I felt insane. This goes to court at the end of the year and the judge rules in favor of Meyer because there are no similar passages and Scott is just claiming similarity based upon like themes. It's hard to prove that regardless of whether or not you give the most unhinged MTV interview of all time. Um, so the judge rules, of course, in favor of Stephanie Meyer. His name is Judge Otis D. Wright II, iconic name. He stated that the two works have little in common and that the characters in the two works are vastly different. Then he admonished Scott for the deceptive presentation of the alleged similarities and noted that she had twice manipulated aspects of the subject work in order to create the appearance of similarity. Now we don't get, again, because nobody's searching for the things that I wanna know. Did she pop open her Adobe subscription? and copy and 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 photoshop to be she photoshops sections of breaking dawn and sections of her book to make them seem similar i want to know this ends of course and scott tried to send another complaint to the court asking them to ban the selling of breaking dawn and also being reimbursed for the damages caused by the copyright infringement that doesn't go anywhere that's really the end of this tale. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this insane, fun, just kind of a fable of sorts, a modern day fable. Thank you so much for watching. Again, the link to my Twilight ticket will be in the description below. Take care of yourself. If you can, please give an unhinged interview with MTV. I'll see you soon. Bye.